Hello everybody, it's Andrew here. Um, I'm going to conclude on from the last lesson. Um, we're going to be doing a few more things with the um, canvas. Um, last time we um, last time we left off, we we made a little circle, um, and uh, we changed changed the size of it. We did a few other thing, cool things. Um, in this one, I'm going to show you how to do a few more things. Um, one one of those things is um, how to incorporate jQuery into your um, into your document and how to rewrite this function and how to clear parts of the canvas. Um, you may have noticed I actually have included this script link. Um, this is basically a link to a JavaScript file. Um, uh, at this location, um, I'll leave this. I'll leave this address in the um, just below the video, so you can all use it. You just need to put this script into your head um, section, and you can use all of the um, you can use all of the cool functions that uh, jQuery um, has to offer. Um, right, let's go. We're going to start off by rewriting this function here. Um, I mean, this works. This can work well for um, a lot of JavaScript um, functions and things, but what we want to do is we want to change it, make it a little bit more efficient, um, and I'm going to change it into um, using jQuery. So we start off with a dollar sign. Um, we're going to select uh, this document, and we're going to say when the document's ready, we want to invoke this function here and spell it right okay I'm gonna close it off here so anything like before very similar to like it was before um, basically gonna say once the once the documents ready um, it's gonna call this function so Again, I'm going to get the 2D context. So I need to canvas equals equals um, do, 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 do. G G canvas. I've got the name of our canvas. Game canvas. Game canvas. Game canvas. Okay. Get context. My spelling is terrible today. Two, two D. Yep. Right. And I forgot to go. Click. And now I've got that on. So I'm doing great. Right. Let's save this. And now to see that it's going to work I'm going to create a rectangle um, 100, 150 by 50 and save let's update this and it's not worked because I didn't put context didn't refer to the context of the canvas and there we go so this works um, yeah, it works. This works better than the window on load function. Basically, the window on load waits too long. It will wait literally um, for every single element to finish loading. Um, this, the document ready function, works just a lot better. So we're going to use that from now on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to clear um, the canvas and also how you can clear specific parts um, and um, delete only parts of. Um, a shape to make it look quite unique. So um, I'm going to create another rectangle, bigger this time. Um, 200. In fact, 
No, I don't need to create another one. I'll just make this one bigger. So if I make this one 300 by 300, should be pretty big. Um, now, say I wanted to just clear a certain part of this canvas here. So if I wanted to take a chunk out of the top here, I could just clear rectangle. So I want to go. So I'm going to go. Uh, actually, I should go 200 along. So I'm going to go 200, probably to about here. I don't know why I'm suddenly talking posh. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go down. Like say 200. Um, and also. I'm going to create, I'm going to clear a rectangle of 200 by 200. Now let's have a look. And not exactly what I was thinking I was going to do, but there you can see I've cleared a 200 by 200 rectangle um, out of this field rectangle. So if I move this up, so actually if I make this smaller. And this one fifty. Perhaps I'll do this one fifty as well. There we go. So I have cleared a rectangle that is one fifty by one fifty. Um, so you can now see through the other rectangle effectively seeing the canvas behind this is the canvas behind uh, the image um, so that's how you clear a rectangle exciting stuff eh now the next thing I'm going to show you how to do which will come in uh, really useful later um, is we're going to move the context and uh, the 2d context um, and where it where it's positioned on the canvas so what do I mean by this? Um, so, say, say I only wanted to select a specific part of the canvas. I can move the 2D context um, so it only affects that part. So, to do this, I can go to context and do and do something called translate. In fact. I keep this here and I'm going to translate this so it moves. So, what I'll do, I can move the 2D context. So, if I type 150, 150, and effectively it should move these rectangles down. So, what's actually happened is the origin of the 2D context has moved from one, 150 across and 150 down from the original um, original location. So, whereas before the 2D context was here, it's now been moved um, further down. Um, so then, add on the add on the location of the um, cube, and it's um, it's all moved. In relation to the other objects, so I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. I'm going to show you because it's probably a little bit confusing uh, why you need to do that. But I'm going to show you how how it becomes useful um, in selecting certain objects. I'm also going to show you how to use the translate um, with scaling as well. So um, it's going to get a little bit more exciting in the next tutorial. And trust me. By the end of this, we're going to be making games. Okay, so it's not going to be this boring all the time. We're going to make thing. We're going to make these things move. We're going to create moving objects. We're going to we're going to create um, a user moves, uh, movable objects, and it's going to be a lot better. You just got to stick with this stuff. Okay, and um, it's going to get a lot better down the line. So I will see you on the next tutorial.